up, y'all? Y'all know what it is, man. It's your hometown hero, the real Adam Coleman uh, here at True ID Apologetics. And I'm actually getting ready to record some uh, new material here. Uh, but people keep hitting me up about this whole Nick Cannon situation, man, where apparently he was fired uh, from Viacom, CBS, for making some you know, real controversial statements regarding race. And, um, you know, he, he apparently he was interviewing uh, Professor Griff of the iconic group Public Enemy. And in the midst of that conversation, said some things that they got him the boot. You know, uh, I did listen to the interview. I actually watched it, you know, all the way through. Uh, actually, unfortunately, by the time I, I went back to go clip some stuff out to respond to, they had already removed it. YouTube had, had taken it down due to, you know, the, um, you know, the claims that it, that it included hate speech. And so, um, actually, I did find a clip of it that I want to play here so people can get an idea of, of what it was that was said uh, that got uh, Nick Cannon fired. Let's, let's go to what it really is then. When we talk about the power of melanated people, when we talk mm -hmm. about who we really are as gods and, and understanding right. that our melanin is so power and it connects us in a way that the reason why they fear black, the reason why they fear is because they the lack that they have of it. So then when you see what you know, Dr. Uh, Francis C. Wellsman talked about, is that fear in that 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 uh, just genetic that annihilation efficiency mm -hmm. of when you have a person that has ha has the lack of pigment the right. lack of melanin right. that they know that they will be annihilated so therefore however they got the power they 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 have the lack of compassion mm -hmm. that mel melanin comes with compassion L melanin comes with soul that mm -hmm. we call it we call it soul we soul brothers and sisters that's the melanin that connects us right. so the people that don't have it have are are a little, and I'm, I'm gonna say this carefully, <laughs> are a little less, and 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 where the term actually comes from, because I'm bringing it all the way back around okay. to, to Minister Farrakhan, to where they may not have the compassion or the the when they were sent to the mountains of Caucasus, when they when they didn't have the power of the sun, that was that the sun then started to deteriorate mm -hmm. them, so then they're acting out of fear they're acting out of low self-esteem they're acting out of a, a deficiency mm -hmm. so therefore the only way that they can act is evil the only way they can they, they have to rob steal rape kill and fight or flight okay. in, or, in order to survive exactly so then these people who didn't have what we had and when i say we i speak of the mm -hmm. melanated people right they had to be savages they had to be barbaric. They had because they're in these Nordic mountains. They're in these rough, uh, torrential environments. Mm. So they they're acting as animals. Right. So they're the ones that are actually closer to animals. They're the ones that are actually the true savages. And then they built up such this this. I don't want to say warrior, but they built up such this 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 conquering mm -hmm. uh, barbaric mentality that they're coming out of Europe. They then said, in order for us to survive, we have to take what's not ours. And then they went into the land that actually where we were, are originated. Mm -hmm. And instead of trying to make friends, they said, we want what you got because there's this mentality of the, whether it's the Caesars or, or even that, that, we have to conquer. Right, right, right. So I say all that to say the context. And when when we speak of whether it's Jewish people, white people, Europeans, the Illuminati, mm. they were doing that as survival tactics right. to stay on this planet. Right, because we they, never had to do that. Right, right. right. So, <laughs> you know, obviously, you know, these are the kind of things that, um, you know, that'll get you fired. <laughs> I think I think pretty much in any job, you know, if you associate race with people's moral character um, you're probably, you know, going to be in hot water. You're probably going to be, you know, walking on, on thin ice at that point. You know what I'm saying? So in this clip, um, you know, your boy Nick is making some distinctions between melanated people and people that lack melanin. And for those who lack melanin, he's saying that they have these certain attributes like lacking compassion, the incapacity, if you will, for showing compassion. Um, or, you know, basically not being able to do anything but evil. <laughs> you know what I'm saying having to, you know, this, this uh, compulsion to take things that don't belong to them, particularly from melanated people and so on. So these these are the attributes that Nick Cannon uh, assigns to people who lack melanin. Now, there's obviously lots of problems with uh, what Nick Cannon said, but among them, for anybody who's you know studies history like I do, they could probably hear inklings of just well, basically a repackaged version of scientific racism. <laughs> you know what I'm saying for anybody who doesn't know what that is, 
just Google the name Carl Linnaeus. You know what I'm saying? He was a Swedish uh, taxonomist. You know what I'm saying uh, taxonomy is basically the science of categorizing uh, organisms, and he applied his skill set to categorizing, you know, the human species. You know what I'm saying and dividing up what we refer to as races. So he had different ones. He had like Asiaticus, uh, Americanus, which was like Native Americans. He had uh, Europeanus, which was uh, obviously Europeans. And then, um, you know, Africanus, you know, which was the Africans. And what's interesting is in the same way that Nick Cannon assigns these negative moral attributes to Europeans, you know, in his view, Carl Linnaeus, way back in the day, assigned negative attributes to African people. I'm saying on the basis of their biology, so to speak. And so Carl Linnaeus viewed African people as being, you know, shiftless, lazy, uh, you know, basically uh, slick or, or, or sneaky, if you will, not, not trustworthy, low moral character, and basically emotional, you know I'm saying, and, and volatile. That's how Carl Linnaeus characterized um, African people, right? So again, it's pretty much the same thing that... Um, that Nick Cannon is saying just you got the roles reversed. And in Nick Cannon's view, it's the Europeans, you know, that are doing that, right? Now, here's the thing. We know the danger of those kinds of ideas. We can look at our own history as a community here in the West and just think about the moral experience of the black community here in the West. And we can say, Dad, you know what? These ideas don't work out too well, right? Because it was, you know, Carl Linnaeus's ideas about dividing up these different people groups based upon race and then assigning these moral characteristics those ideas were used as a justification for the continuance of the transatlantic slave trade, right? Because basically people said that, well, you know, they're lesser beings anyway, so we might as well exploit them. Or in some cases, they took on this kind of paternalistic uh, perspective where it's like, okay, well, for their own good, we're going to enslave these Africans or else they're just going to ruin themselves, that kind of, or destroy themselves or something like that. And, you know, those ideas from Carl Linnaeus were, like I said, they were used to uh, support the transatlantic slave trade. Um, and actually, you can kind of hear some of those high notes in what uh, Nick Cannon was saying. It's like, you know, kind of, these people, they just can't help it. They had to be savages. They had to be animalistic. I mean, they just can't do anything about it. You know, it's, it's that it's like Carl Linnaeus 2.0 or something like that, you know. And so um, and again, even after slavery. Right. Um, you know, coming out of uh, slavery here in America, this notion of these negative moral characteristics of like, you know, black people are dangerous. They're they're, you know, they're. Um, just obey their fleshly desires and just natural instincts. They don't have any control over themselves. I mean, those kind of stupid racist ideas were actually used to institute what were referred to as the black codes. You know what I'm saying? After African-Americans were freed in, you know, in uh, 1865, these black codes were put in place in the South particularly. And basically it would just be these crazy punishments that ultimately would put you back in the position of being enslaved, even though black people have been freed. And they use this uh, justification of, well, they, they can't control themselves. So we got to control them. Right. Because they're, you know, they're black and they're African and they are of low moral character. Right. It's the same idea that um, your boy Nick Cannon is articulating. You know, once you begin to um, assign inhuman characteristics to a people group, then that is the first step to treating them inhumanely, if you will. You know what I'm saying? And I just think that that people, anybody really with a moral compass um, and common sense, you know, shouldn't follow uh, Nick Cannon down that road at the end of the day. So ultimately, like Nick Cannon hasn't given us anything new here. <laughs> and I guess maybe he feels as deep. I don't know. Uh, but ultimately, he hasn't given us anything new. He's just given us white supremacy in blackface. That's really all it is. I'm saying in terms of the view that he's articulated. And to be honest, I think it would just be uh, just a super disgrace to our ancestors who you know, shed blood, sweat, and tears, and even died, you know what I'm saying, fighting against oppression for us to then turn around in today's time and actually become what they were fighting against. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I just can't do that to, you know, the legacy of our ancestors. You know what I'm saying? I think it's just a super disgrace. And then, too, I mean, again, it falls apart. Like, if you're going to say that um, melanin is directly associated with these moral traits or, or immoral traits, right? Well, the reality is, I mean, even amongst you know so-called black people, so-called melanated people, you, I mean, you have people of all all races. You know what I'm saying? That have various different melanin counts. You know what I'm saying? You have some people who are indigenous Africans that are albinos, all the way up to you know the darkest of the dark. You know what I'm saying? I mean, that's that's just the reality of it. If we're gonna take uh, Nick Cannon's views to their logical conclusion, then we're gonna have to adopt like some sort of colorism. We're gonna have to say amongst melanated people 
that there are some melanated people who are like really melanated and thus of a high moral fiber. You know what I'm saying? And then you're going to have those who are on the lighter side who, you know, they might be melanated, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, eh, they're barely making it in. You know, so it's like, I guess like the Drakes and the Steph Currys of the world, you know what I'm saying, they're kind of just like barely above animalistic, you know, savages. Like, you know what I'm saying? You know, I guess, which is which is stupid. That's obviously dumb. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, it, on his view, if we're going to take it to his logical conclusion, then, yeah, we're going to have to introduce this color-based hierarchy into the black community. And ultimately, if you're going to take that route, then you're going to end up shooting the black community in the foot because now you've introduced a level of, of um, division that, you know, I think we probably, you know, at least particularly in recent years, we've been getting over, you know. So that's, you know, again, man, I'm just kind of giving my two cents, you know what I mean? But, I mean, the reality is um, you can't build a strong community on a foundation of, of weak ideas. You know what I'm saying? It's just it's just a fact. I mean, the, the views that that Nick Cannon articulated, um, you see how they just kind of can fall apart and will actually end up militating against, you know, the unity in, in the black community because now you got all this, you know, color scheme stuff going on. And um, it's funny, I was thinking about doing a video on it, but actually it kind of reminds me of, now, <laughs> I'm not recommending that people necessarily go watch it, but um, for anybody who used to watch the Chappelle show, uh, there's this one character, he had uh, Clayton Biz Bigsby. And Clayton Bigsby was the world's only black white supremacist. You know, so you, it, it, apparently he was a blind guy, blind black guy who didn't know that he was black and he was a white supremacist. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And so, and then there's one scene where he's like talking at a, um, I guess a white supremacist rally of some sort. And he's got like the, the clan hood and all that kind of stuff. And he takes the hood off and everybody's like all, you know, distraught that this is a black man, <laughs> you know, that's speaking at their rally or whatever. And it's just dumb, you know, because you have, again, you have like this, this black person who's, Races against black people because he's too because he's blind. He doesn't know any better, and that's kind of what I see when it comes to, you know, canon and, and these similar worldviews. That these people are blinded by misconceptions, misinformation, and bad logic, such that they can't see how self-destructive to our community um, their bad ideas are. Right, and so you know, with that being said, that's why it's so important, I think, for Christians to take up space in the public conversation and say, look, you know, we're not just talking about some kind of pie in the sky type of gospel. No, we're saying that, you know, that in the same way that two plus two equals four, that the biblical worldview is true. Or, or to put it differently, we're saying that just like if you step out of a plane and, you know, without a parachute, gravity is going to do what it does and you're probably not going to do too well. You're probably not going to make it, right? So in the same way that you can you can doubt gravity if you want to, you can claim that you can fly, whatever, but, re, you know, the reality is going to hit you in the face, you know what I'm saying, when you step out of that plane. Well, in the same way, the biblical worldview aligns with the reality. And when you're out of step with the biblical worldview, when you're out of step with the world as it actually is, there are going to be negative consequences. You know what I'm saying? So likewise, when it comes to these erroneous, um, illogical constructs of, what I, of, of, um, of identity, you know what I'm saying? If we allow those ideas to flourish in our community, then they're going to be destructive. And we need to be about addressing those kinds of things, which is why I have got the True ID podcast. You know what I'm saying? With that being said, I love y'all, man. Just give my two cents real quick. And, um, you know, for real, man, check me out on uh, YouTube. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. Check me out on Facebook, uh, Instagram, Twitter. Uh, if you feel so inclined, holler at me on Patreon. As a matter of fact, that's what, that's what I'm preparing for right now. Uh, Patreon.com. I've got a page where people can support. And we actually have our own book club, you know, where we're working through some stuff. So y'all can, you know, get in on that as well. But y'all know what it is, man. Love God. Love people. Take care of the things that God bless you with. Peace.